All right, everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to the ZHP Garage channel. And it is early o'clock right now, dark o'clock. So we're gonna be making a trip out to Phoenix, Arizona. So this might sound a little odd, like why are you going to Phoenix, Arizona for no reason? But it's not for no reason. We are gonna be fixing a car that has been having overheating issues. It's a 63 Impala. We got a message through Instagram, someone saying that they're having some issues with their 63 Impala overheating and whatnot and they want us to come out and fix it so we're gonna do that right now we are currently still in San Diego driving driving that way so what do you got what do you got roll out let's go Lives are living killer. We're almost there. We made it to Phoenix. We're 7.9 miles away, but we need to get breakfast, so we're starving. All right, we had breakfast, lunch, bre slash breakfast, lunch, bre bre brunch. So now we're gonna head over and start working on this 63 Impala. We talked with the guy for a couple days trying to gauge what's going on with the Impala, but we still we still need to look at it. So we're gonna go and check it out right now. So what do you got? Let's go, man. Let's go see this thing. We just got here with the 63 Impala. Um, we just got done talking to the owner, more about the problems he's having, what's been done to it. I kind of looked it over, you want to check it out. It's pretty clean. So he's having a problem with this thing overheating. Not so much in traffic, but driving. A couple things I've noticed that I don't like so far is the way the cooling fan's wired. You got the home nuts, and if you look at the gauge of the wires to the fan, it's pretty pretty small stuff. So I kind of traced it back inside. There's no relay or nothing. It just goes to the it's an aftermarket fuse box. So what I want to do is, I want to make sure the engine was supposedly, he said it was rebuilt about two, two years ago. It's kind of been overheated a couple times, over 220. So I just want to check the condition of the engine first before we get too far and get it started and up to temp, you know, get it hot. So I'm going to pull all the plugs out of it. I'm going to do a compression test on it. I'm going to look at the plugs and see if there's any signs of any uh, water or coolant or anything getting on the plugs. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to verify top dead center. So when I do get it running, I can set the timing. And then we're going to start it. And then I got a, a little heat gun. So we want to verify what it's doing and see that it's actually overheating. So right now we're going to pull the plugs out of it. We're going to check those out and then verify top dead center. So I'm gonna do that now. So a couple other things too that's kind of a little questionable is this return spring, kind of low on the carburetor throttle, so the, and there's only one. So I'd like to see that have two and be up a little higher so it has a little more leverage, but it's, it seems to be okay, but that's a little questionable also. Yeah, you couldn't remember exactly what was done to the engine, if it was bored, how much, what kind of pistons, you know, the compression on it. Just gonna try to get an idea, make sure it's okay. It's got some pretty decent, it's got some MSD wires, it's got pretty good stuff. It's got an ignition box, not bad at all. So I got all these spark plugs out on this side. They look pretty good. They don't look like any coolant's getting on them. Look like it's running pretty good. But the only thing is one's an auto light and you got three AC Delco. So that's not gonna help too much. I mean, it's not gonna cause it to overheat. It's not running right. And I found a couple of these spark plugs. The boots are a little, a little weathered. That one there, and then this one here, which is on backwards, because that one, this side's supposed to go to the distributor. So this wire is actually flipped. It's probably why it doesn't fit very good, but you can see where it's cut right here. It is exposed in the terminal, so it can arc. A couple deals going on here. So I'm gonna get the passenger side out now and see how that side looks, and we're gonna do a compression test. So I got all the spark plugs out of this side. They, they all look pretty good. They don't look like coolant. This is front one, it's not really black. It almost looks like it's getting oil on it, but it's not coolant. They all look pretty even. These all, all these spark plugs are all AC Delco, so it's not causing our problem, so that's good. But I did find um, a couple of the boots on this side, same same issue. So I need a set of wires. Got a rip there. Now that we got the spark plugs out, I'm gonna take the ignition wire off of the coil, so I can crank it over and have to worry about any spark. And then we're gonna so we're gonna do a quick compression test. So this is a, a compression tester. So what you do is so there's different adapters. This has a short. The short peanut plug, they call it, the short threads because it's a cast iron late model head. So you can just use the short. It just has an O-ring and it's got a Schrader valve in the end. When it blows the compression out, it reads it on the gauge and then the Schrader is one way. 
So it holds it so you can you can read it. You don't sit there and stare at it. So we're just gonna screw this in there and hook up our gauge and then crank it over. But first we're gonna take the ignition wire off of the coil so we don't get any any spark. Actually I'd probably just pull the I'll pull the let's pull the coil wire off. Being that the terminal is down inside the coil, there's nothing for it to arc on, so I should be alright with that. So I'll just take the plug wire off the coil and I can crank it over without having any spark on anything. And you just do it hand, hand tight, you don't need to get crazy. And then you set your gauge somewhere where it's not gonna flop crazy. I set it right there so you can have a look-see at it. I'm gonna crank it over and you kinda wanna hear a rhythm in the engine. You kinda want four rhythms, four cycles to get a complete, complete stroke of the engine. So I'm gonna listen to, I'm gonna take this stuff off of here just to make sure it doesn't rattle. All right, let's crank it over. Making all kinds of noise. What we got? 150 pounds. That one looks pretty good. Did you see a spark gun back there? Was it? It was like a, a straight up like Back to the Future lightning. 1.21 gigawatts. It sound like we're getting a little bit of spark out of our coil, so we're going to take the power. We're going to take the ignition wire off of it. It didn't go as planned. It still arced through the coil, so I'm just going to unplug the pickup to the box. This is this goes to the distributor, so it'll have no pickup. So. Hopefully we'll have no spark now. All right, so now we hopefully have no spark now. So we have 150 on one. So now we're gonna go on, we're gonna put in the next cylinder. So we just got done doing the compression tests on all the cylinders. It looks, they look good. It's like 150, 160, every, every cylinder. So no sign of a head gasket issue or water coolant getting into the cylinder, so that's good. All right, so I have my assistant bump it over on top dead center on the compression stroke. So the next stroke is gonna be your, your fire power stroke. So I just put my finger in the spark plug, had him bump it over until it blew it out. So that's not exact. So now I'm going to use like a pick and I'm going to go into the cylinder and I want to fill the piston and then I'm going to finish turning it over by hand. So I'm going to fill the piston come up so I can feel it come all the way to the top, top dead center and I'm going to verify it on the timing mark that is actually at zero. So somebody did this notch here so I don't know if that is supposed to be zero. It's got some marks on here where it's kind of vibrating. This isn't exactly the right timing mark. So I just want to verify that. So we're close to top dead center because it just started to blow my finger out. So now I'm going to put a little pick in here so I can fill the piston and I'm going to turn it over by hand. So it's easier to do now because all the spark plugs are still out. So the turnover pretty easy. So you just want to get a fill. Okay, I'm just going to set it on the top of the piston. And you want to be careful it doesn't bind up. So you just hold it there. And you can see as I come up, see it's pushing it up. So you kind of make sure it doesn't bind. So you're now on top of the piston. When it gets to the point that's not coming up anymore, it looks like it's pretty much zero. So you can see if you keep going, you put a little bit of pressure on it. If you keep going, your piston's gonna start going back down. It gets to a point as it's coming, crank stroke is coming up, but it sits at the top as it swings over. So you have a couple degrees. This pretty much gives you a pretty close idea of where you're at. So we can look on this and see so they have a notch in it. But I can't read what's underneath it. So maybe I'll just call it 16, so be like 14. So 14 degrees on the dampener, on the edge of that, I'm gonna call that zero. So when I go to time it now, when I have the light on it, I'll just have to read, read back. So I'll have to read, so it'll be the third big line. I'm gonna call the edge of this at 14 degrees on the dampener, zero. So now when I get it running, and I have the time of light on it, then that's gonna be my zero in a sense. And I'm gonna put whatever timing I want in the, in the timing light. I can just line that up with however many degrees. All right, so we got the spark plugs and the wires put back on it. We didn't replace them right now. It's not causing the issue. We're gonna do it later, we don't have the parts. Um, we got our timing light set up. Same timing light that we used in the 64 Impala. Check that video out. So we're gonna start this thing. We're gonna, we're gonna bring it to temperature. We got a heat gun and we wanna verify. So we're gonna you know, point at the hose, point at the heads. So right now it's 96 degrees. It's pretty much ambient temperature in Arizona here because it's hot as can be today. So we got the radiators full. We're gonna leave the cap off because I wanna see if I could tell that the thermostat's opening and I start to get water flow. So I'm gonna start it now. I wanna verify that engine temperature is actually the same temperature as the gauge or if the sender is just messing up, giving it the wrong signal. So we're gonna bring the temperature, set the timing, Verify what it's running at. Let's fire this thing up, see what it does. We're just gonna let it idle. No, no crazy revving. Fan's a little weak, but it's on right now. He's got a wire so it runs all the time. So it's going the right direction. It's pulling the air through. Not even 100 degrees yet. 
Check the thermostat. So if you look on the on the gauge, it's showing just a hair under 140 on the temp. Let me see what it's reading at the engine. Well, the gauge is reading 20 degrees hotter than what it actually is. Even if you go to the thermostat, even if you go right where it's reading it, it's 110. So it's showing 30 degrees hotter at the gauge. So this thing may not necessarily be overheating. You hear the idle pickup? I don't know if you can tell that on the video or not. I just leaned out the idle screws because it's blowing a lot of black sooty exhaust out the back and you can see that the idle speed picked up. You can see that it was bogged down just from running rich. This is a manual. So we're gonna set the idle speed a little lower. So right now it's idling at eight, 870. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring the RPMs up and I'm just gonna follow, follow to see what it's at right now. And I'll have to show you in a minute that I, I made a mark on there because the tummy pointer that's on there covers up the dampener so you can't read it. So I just put a line on there right now and I made the edge of it zero. So you'll see a black mark come up and that's what I'm, that's what I'm timing it off of. Thirty-one degrees of total timing, which is a little—it's not crazy, but if you can actually put a couple more degrees, it would be good for it. Yeah, do some of this return spring. It's not stiff enough to bring it back to idle. So we're up to almost 180. Measure the same spot. So 180. So we're almost 45, 40 degrees off. The cylinder head is 180, but that's not where it's reading at. That's where the gauge is reading at. The radiator, 126, 125. So it's good so far. So he's out um, driving it right now. So what I found so far, the gauge is pretty much reading between 35 and 40 degrees hotter than what the engine's reading with my temp gun. Could possibly just be a bad center that came with the dash. It's got a Dakota dash in it. He went out to drive it how he normally drives it when he says it overheats. So he's gonna go drive it, bring it back. We're gonna check it again compare it to the gauge, to, to the actual intake where the temp center, temp center is in the cooling at, and then see what it's actually doing. But he's out driving right now. Okay, we found the issue to why the 63 Impala was overheating, but it, it's technically not overheating because as you saw from the previous clips, it was 30 degrees cooler than what it was reading on the dash. So. What's going on, Master Mechanic? So we got a hold of Dakota because it's got a Dakota dash in it. And we went through the prompts on the on the dash and it's all right. So what we found out is that the probe for the sender is not in the cooling system far enough and is reading stagnant water because the probe is not down. So I got a eighth inch pipe tab with me. I need to go to Home Depot to get a three eighths pipe. We're gonna pipe or tap both the fittings the, the, the fitting for the center and then the fitting into the intake so we can get the probe down into the cooling system so hopefully it'll read the coolant instead of the stagnant water so it actually read properly so we're going to home depot right now to get a tap we're going to come back let the engine cool off we're going to come back and uh, tap it do the same test again we're going to warm it up drive it it should read right at that point the engine is not overheating it's just reading incorrectly all right we found it so it Lowe's didn't have it. They said you have to special order it. Ace didn't have it. Home Depot didn't have it. Some of the other little small hardware stores around here in Phoenix didn't have it. But we finally found one pretty close by that had it. So we have the 3 8 drive. Got it right here. In all its glory, right here. This is what we were looking for. So we're gonna head back. You were in the wrong turn lane, sir. So we're gonna head back finish this uh, good old job up and we're gonna call it. So this is what I was talking about. You can see that the threads, this sensor is pretty much you want it bottomed out. So these two um, are touching. And then you want this one, the adapter fitting, pretty much down flush, this nut almost touching the intake. So take this out. We're gonna tap the little guy, which is an eighth inch pipe into the adapter fitting here. We're gonna go down a little bit deeper. So this will go down because right now they're, they're as tight as you want to get with them. So we're gonna tap this so that goes down pretty much touches and then we're gonna pull this adapter out 
We're gonna tap the intake, 3 8 pipe tap to bring this fitting down. So that's where we found that this is up too high, the sensor's up too high, and it's just a stagnant water. It's not in the flow, so the temperature gauge is just slowly going up because the water's just sitting there. So this thing just has straight water in it. It's still a little warm. So I'm gonna take the pressure off. Okay, now we got the pressure off. I'm just gonna take that fitting out and just let it run. It's just pretty much water, so there's no, there's nothing bad in it. So we're gonna take the sensor out first and tap it, and then we'll pull the bottom out. See, the probe needs to be, we don't think it's down far enough. You can see with this in here, so it's sticking through, we just want it deeper. According to D D Dakota Dash, Dakota, it needs to be as deep as possible. So we're just gonna, we're gonna run it down. Take some anesthes, we'll put it on the end. And you gotta be careful, this is a pipe tap, so if you get too far, it'll bottom out, and it won't do anything anymore. You have it too loose. Just go a little bit at a time. So we brought that one down. So now we're going to do the intake. You see that by putting the anesthesia grease on the fittings, it catches the shavings. Helps keep it out of the, whatever you're tapping, cooling system. That and the coolant pushing it up keeps, keeps it all out of there. So now we got to tap down. Now that we have both of them tapped down, we can put some Teflon paste on it. So now we got that all the way down, bottomed out. We're going to do the same to our temperature sensor. We can put Teflon paste on it, running around the same way. It's all the way down touching. So now we eliminate that as being a problem. We're gonna fire it up, bring the temperature, make sure the thermostat's open, top it back up with water, then we're gonna run it again. See if the gauge is closer to the engine temperature now. So we got it all put back together. It's still not reading accurately. Looks like there's something wrong with that sender. The gauge is reading 180 degrees. If you look at this guy right next to it, like 150, so between 30 and 20 degrees different from the gauge to the, the actual temp gun. So but at least we found the problem. While we're here, we noticed that the valves were a little loud. A couple were loose, so we went and adjusted the valves. Might be able to tell earlier on the, on the video where it's kind of clattery. Just checked a couple things out. Got it running, but at least we found the problem that it's not actually overheating. But we got it all buttoned back up, filled full of water. He's gonna go drive it again, bring it back. We're gonna see what it does. That's pretty much what happened to the 63 Impala, the running hot issue. We got it figured out. So thanks for checking it out. See you next time. So I'm gonna be able to go on a ride along Right, well, yeah. So I'm gonna be able to go on a ride along with the, the owner of it really quick. We're just gonna check out how the drivability of it is compared to how it was before. So let's go right now. So we're on the test drive right now. The temperature is going up a little bit on the the dash which was expected that's a pretty good sound to it though it sounds it's not too loud it's not too quiet it's, you know it's just right right in the right spot <laughs> it has a uh, flow masters on it it's a stainless steel dual exhaust so fits in really well with the 63 impala here Next day, we are just on the outskirts of Phoenix, heading back home, and we're gonna go get back to it in San Diego. So, what do you got to say, Mr. Master, Mr. The Master? It's a good trip. Glad I was able to fix the Impala, help him out. We're gonna get back home now and get back to work. So, if you guys did enjoy the video, please go down below, hit the subscribe button if you guys are new around here. And if you made it this far in the video, also hit the like button. We're gonna get going on a couple other things that we have planned. So, stay tuned. Here's a couple other videos you can check out as well. So. We'll see you guys all next time.